It's another K-Town beat. YouTube, 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 it's your boy, Mr. Outliner. Hey, look, I need you to stop. I mean, stop right now. I need y'all to comment, like, subscribe, something. I need you to do something under this video, to this video for me. Let me know I'm doing a good job. But, hey, anyway, I got the low taper on the 360 wave. That boy waves is popping, man. That is them waves is popping already. I ain't got it's such a pleasure when a guy take care of his hair for the barber so the barber can get to doing what he need to do. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a critical part, an important part. You know, uh, I did a video on him before. Uh, if you watch my videos, you probably seen one a while back, probably almost a year ago. But I wanted to update it, do a new one. It was a taper also, but this right here. Uh, is to help people understand the the format for a taper you know to understand that all haircuts have a design way that you want to go into the haircut so what do i mean when i say that you want to approach almost every haircut the exact same way with the exact same steps that way you build repetition, that way you build speed, and you know, you get comfortable with your, uh, what you wanna call it, this is like a process, this is like your format, right? So we always start with a guideline on any haircut, basically, unless it's like an even all over, or you know, just a lineup. But you start with the first guideline, right? And the first guideline is ball. Then after that, you want to come back with your half guard and you want to do open and close. Always remember that you want to do open and close just in case uh, you make a mistake and it, it saves you from making mistakes that you can't correct. So if you were to go in with it closed, it might be too, you make a, a your guideline too high. So you want to, you know, make sure it's able to get it out and you want to do it gradually, right? This is graduating up, right? So we went from no guard to half a guard to now we had a one guard, right? And so the same thing here, you do open the close, you go up. It's like you're making a line to take away a line, right? That's the objective of doing a taper or any kind of haircut. Make a line to take away a line. We took the one guard here. We're trying to take away the line that we made with the half guard, right? And we use the half guard to take away what we did with no guard, right? So after I did the one, I come back. Now, you can use the half guard right here if you wanted to, but I kind of skipped a step and I went straight to no guard because I know how to manipulate my clipper. If you hold it at a certain angle and if you stroke it right, you don't have to use the half guard, but I suggest you use the half guard and remove the excess bulk if it's there. And right here, I feel like it was still bulky, so I came back with the one and a half. Like I said, you graduating up, you go from no guard to half a guard to one guard to a one and a half guard. Now, when you do that, like I said, your blend should come out right. And if it doesn't, just keep working away at it. You might need to use the corners of your blade or something like that just to get it right. Now, you see how the fade coming out? The fade is coming out nice. So that's what you want to do. This is the kind of look that I want. I don't know if it's the same look you want, but that's the look that I was looking for right on the fade. Now, on this side, I was adjusting to my autofocus. I did the same steps on this side, but a part of it got blurred, so it's gonna seem like it skipped the step. But it's the exact same thing. That's what I say. Once you get a a routine going, you know that you do all the time. Oh, I'm gonna start with balding first, then I'm gonna go into fading next, then I'm gonna 
you know, after I get all the fading done, I'm going to go into an edge or, or I'm going to do the back, you know, I'm going to do the neckline tape or whatever. You know, you just want to do the exact same steps, one, two, three, four, five, every time, every haircut. You know what I'm saying? It's the same format, every haircut, right? So remember on the other side, I used the one and a half to remove some more bulk and I did the same thing on this side. So the step that it skipped was the one guard. So, like I said, I came through, I, I got the half a guard on there this time, and then I come back, and I I knock it down in the front with the half a guard because I want to make it smooth where everything lays down. Now, and if the half guard is not working when I'm going with the grain, I take the one guard against the grain to make it even more smooth. After that, you want to start your edge up. Now, I'm using the Rose Gold Skeletons, the new one, the FX. I like these trimmers. You know I always do trimmer reviews. If you don't, you know, go back a couple videos. I did a review on these. Now, you want to keep the edge up as natural as possible, and that's what I did right here. And you just want to work your way around. Take your time with it. Make sure you hit all the lines on it. And, you know, you don't have to push it back just to get a... Um, sharp line you can just take your time with it tap it make sure everything good and boom there you go Now, when you get to the front of the haircut, I like to start from the middle and work my way over. Whichever side is uh, highest, I do that one first and then I match it up. But uh, this time I kind of started from the middle side and I just work my way over. I'm used to cutting this hair, so I already know exactly where to start. And that's another thing. Once you get used to your clients and cutting their hair, you already know exactly where to hit it at, what to do to make it look nice. And that's what I did right here. And the key to doing the edge ups also is to make sure you can see exactly where you're putting the blade at. If you can see where you're putting the blade at, then you can get a sharp line because you can see exactly what you're doing. You know, get out your own way. You know what I mean? Constantly use a comb, constantly brush it down because hair tends to curl up or move to the side or, you know, you have to make sure that you're going in the direction that a, no, a person would normally comb or brush their hair, right? You see his edge up is already popping. No enhancements. That's just straight line of work right there. That's straight wrist work right there. You know what I mean? Wrist work popping. You know what I mean? But anyway, you see how his edge up coming out. And if you see something that, that looks like uh, it's out of place, don't be scared to go back and you know, check your work. You know, I do it all the time. It's like a math problem. You want to go back, you want to check your work. You know, even on this side, I was like, oh, okay, I'm not really exactly happy with this side. Let me make sure I'm happy with this side. You know what I mean? So, as a barber, we always looking for perfection. And perfection comes over time, and perfection comes with, uh, you know, repetition, right? And following your steps, following your guide. So you see that the edge up is nice, it's popping, everything is cool right there. And you know, I just cleaned up around his beard and things like that. You see how we're doing. And in the back, we did the exact same thing. I don't think it was. it's a reason for me to just go over the steps with you on the back, but I'll show you how I did the back, lined him up and things like that. I'm doing like a little line up here first, but you know, you get the point. 
you do the same thing on the back what you did to the side so i just um speed it up i'll let you watch it and you'll see the results And that's pretty much the type of right there. You see the back came out beautifully. You know what I mean? Check that out. The thing came out beautiful. So, as I was saying, you know, you take your time with your, with your lineups. I'll show you right here. And you want to stay as wide as possible on the back of the neck when you're doing the, the trimming. And make sure you hold the, the ear down so you don't cut the ear. Now, with his hair, you see in the front, the very front right here. It's a light spot right in front of my thumb, right on this edge up. He always has that every time. So, you know, we're going to use a little enhancements here just to fill it in and make it look right. You see the taper came out nice. The edge up is nice. The, the waves are nice. You see how everything comes together when the client takes care of their hair, when the barber does what he's supposed to do, and the haircut comes out nice. You see that? So, uh, you use the little enhancements here. And uh, I always leave a link in my description on how you can uh, buy the same machine that I have. And it's called the Master Airbrush Machine. So you see it now, everything looks full. No, no spaces, no, you know, the density or nothing like that. So everything is cool. Then once you spray it in, you go back and you, you know, put your little touch of work on it. But anyway, like I said in the beginning, stop what you're doing. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. You know how we do it. Until next time, love, peace, and hair grease. I'm out.